for the kingdom of God. Right? And, and in that, at the very end, you know, Mark, Mark said, hey, we, we can't forget that joy is still there. Let me, let me say something that I thought about all week. 100% joy is there. But if you're new to Christ and you start going through some suffering, you might not have joy yet. It's yours for the taking, but you might not know that yet. You might not have the understanding yet. You might not, you know, and, and so, so that comes around and we have to see that. Just because Jesus is reigning in your life now, just because you've decided to take that first step, doesn't mean that you know how to access all the fruit. And so today, as, as we dig a little further, I want this week to be about the results in our personal life because of the suffering that we are in. And these results will be seen in or during that suffering if we are th going through the suffering for Jesus. So if our main focus is Jesus through any suffering, through the loss of someone, through, through a, a loss of a job, or through, through maybe a broken arm, or, uh, you know, other things going on in your life. Maybe, maybe you're in a relationship you shouldn't be in, and you're suffering through that. Because God hasn't said, you know what, you're, it's okay, you can leave. Yeah, that'd be the easy way out, right? <laughs> There's a character in the Bible that talks about that. But the reality is, is that, that we come in and we suffer for Christ, but when we suffer for Christ, his fruit starts growing in our lives. You know, we suffer so that, that as, as the product of Christ, that we could be drained and that we could provide a healthy spiritual partner or, or, or friend for someone else. And that they could drink of what God has, has given us. So this week is about taking it a step further. And, and realizing that we have these spiritual gifts that have been given to us. And uncovering them and saying, God, I want more. I want more so I can give more. So starting off Ephesians 3 verse 14, it says this. When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray from the glorious unlimited resources he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. You know, Paul, Paul says, hey, af after all this suffering, I'm praying for you. After, after the suffering that you're going to go through, I'm going to pray for you. And, and we're going to go through this together. I've done some suffering. Let me come with you along your suffering. And he's, in, he's probably in prison right here, right? He is in prison. He's suffering. He says, hey, don't, earlier on in the book, he says, hey, don't worry about my suffering. This is about you. And he's saying, hey, I want to be a part of this with you. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to fall to my knees and pray for you. How many times do you fall to your knees? If you bump your head, right? There's anguish. I almost do that in my house. But that's, that's the reality. Like when there's anguish, when there's some kind of pain, we fall to our knees and go, God, help me. Why me? You know, and it's like, this me, 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 me prayer. But see, Paul's going to his knees going, Lord, help them. See, Paul's found secrets that aren't really secrets already. He's gone through some suffering. He carries some fruit. He's been suffering so he could give more of the juice that God has given him. The pure, organic, natural, healthiest juice ever that he can give to someone. Spirit to spirit. It's not, a, it's not a real fruit that you hold in your hand and you, you drink it. It's a spiritual fruit. And he's saying, hey, you know what? You can juice me. I'll help you out. Drink, drink of this. This isn't living water. This is living fruit. It's produced through the Holy Spirit through me. Like he, he came to me. He produced it. Now it's yours. 
Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever, have you ever taken that into consideration? See, but he's praying, he's praying that from the glorious unlimited resources that he will empower you with inner strength through the Spirit. Hey, how many resources does God have? Yeah, exactly, right? Pfft, I don't know. Exactly. I don't know. We could say unlimited. We could say a million. We could say numbers that, that blow our minds. But the reality is there's still more. You could say unlimited, but there's something after that. Infinity, great. There's something after that. That's the reality of God. He has so much to give you. And joy is one of those. See, it also talks about how if, if we're going after God, right? What's, what's another way to say going after God? How about this? In John, it talks about if you abide in me, I will abide in you. What does abide mean? Just sit there and relax on your comfy couch of the Lord and, and wait for the popcorn to come and the movie to start? You know what I'm saying? No. No, it's, it's you know what? I'm not going to sit on my comfy couch. I'm going to get on my knees. I'm going to seek you out, God, and I'm going to find you today, tomorrow, the next day, the next day, the next day. And you know what? It's not good enough just to find you. I want to learn about you. I want to dig in to this spiritual popcorn that's really authentic. Or organic fruit. And I mean not that 5% organic so you could put it on the label. I'm talking like 100% real organic spiritual fruit. And God's saying, hey, if you abide in me, I will abide in you. And this is the prayer Paul is pr praying. Lord, I pray that they abide in you. Because of your unlimited resources. I pray that you will make your home in their hearts and that they will trust you. I pray that their roots will grow deep into who you are. You plant a tree. Now let's go with something a little harder to take care of. You plant a garden. You got some beans and some peas and some corn. If you don't water it, what happens? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hey, what if you give it a natural fertilizer and water it? It grows really well, right? You could just give it water and it'll grow. But it's not going to be as bountiful as if you put like a natural fertilizer on it or... Right? Am I right? I don't know. I'm not a farmer. All right. I'm right. The farmer says I'm right. But it's real, like, like if you want to be so bountiful, if you want to have so much fruit hanging off you, and I'm talking about spiritual fruit, you can't just go into prayer, but you have to dig and read and seek God. You have to, you have to dig open his word. Hey, can I recommend something? Don't just read it. Because we all get into that spot where we just read it, and it just becomes words on a paper. Start writing it. Start, start reading it and then applying it on paper to God. Start going, God, you know, I, I see that John 3.16 says that you love us and that you gave your son to die on the cross for us. I get that. Write it down. Write what you're saying. And really go, God, I need you. Maybe you're having struggles with that one verse. And you go on to 17 and you see that Jesus didn't come to condemn the world but to save it. And you go, wow God, you sent this guy who didn't come to condemn me, to convict me or anything like that. He, he came to save me. And then a whole new world opens up, right? You never know. But if you write it down and you start researching it and start studying it, and I mean studying it, all of a sudden this, this root that you're growing towards Christ grows so much more. And it goes more. And it says, hey, I want to reach out to God. There's a song I love. And, and the song says, Lord, rip my tendons from my arms so I can reach a little bit further. Ouch. But man, when I heard that song, I said, Lord, rip my tendons from my arms so I can reach you. And he, you know what he said? Start studying more. Oh, Thanks, God. I wanted an instant gratification thing here. I'm a millennial, okay? But that's the reality is God says, hey, guess what? If you want me to rip your tendons, reach for me by searching for me. 
And you know what? I'm not searching for him. I've already found him. But I'm searching for more of him. More of his spirit. More of his counsel. More of his direction. More of who he is. More of his characteristics. Because Matthew 5.48 says, Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. The only way I'm going to even think about that is if I go after that. I have to strive for that. And see, God is saying, hey, if you want more fruit, abide in me. Because if he abides in you, he's going to bring you gifts. Have you ever noticed that? They might not be monetary, they might not be physical, but they'll be spiritual. Anybody ever go through some financial problems? Yeah, and you go, God, I need the money. What if you said, God, I want more joy. God, I want more patience. Man, you're not even praying for what you need. But God already knows that. He, but you do need it. You're just praying, God, I want to serve you better. Yeah, the suffering gets you to this point. And guess what? There's more suffering up here. It's mental suffering, right? Sometimes. It's, it's just so good to be here. And be in this place with you. I just want my roots to grow towards Jesus. More. Not just today. Not tomorrow. But forever. Ephesians 3.18 starts off and it says this. And it says, And may you have the power to understand all as all God's people should. How wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ through, though it is too great to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Hey, there's a little mystery there. We've been told it's, it's boundless. Oh yeah, it's boundless. I know everything now. You don't know a thing. His love is so boundless that there's a mystery there. And we're just supposed to understand a little bit of his love. Like how wide and how deep and how long and how great his love is. But there's more. He wants to lavish you with love. He really wants to lavish you with all the gifts. But sometimes we put a roadblock in front of him. Mentally. And sometimes we even put a physical road, or we think there's a physical roadblock in front of him and we're mentally putting it there. See, he could conquer that, but you've decided to put the roadblock up. So he's saying, I'm not going to pass something if you're stopping me. Anybody ever hear that you have a uh, gentleman of a God? Yeah, he's a gentleman. You stop him, he's not going to pass it until you say, I'm ready. Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever thought like Jesus isn't just going to come down, knock, knock down your door and make you do something you don't want to do? I mean, if I don't want to go witness today, is he going to make me witness anyway? Probably not. Because there's something to do with growth there. And when I realize it and I'm crying on the street in front of strangers and I'm, I'm sitting there going, Lord, why did I do that? All of a sudden, I've become a witness. See, this, this scripture means that even when you're sitting around, that no matter what, and no matter who you're thinking about, maybe it's the unlovable. But say you're sitting on your couch in front of your TV, and, and you used to think one way about somebody, but now all of a sudden you're thinking a totally different loving way about somebody. You might have thought, man, I could never go to them. But now you're thinking, man, I really need to call them up and invite them over. See, this verse is saying, hey, God's love is so boundless that no matter what you do, you need to love everyone. Because his love is so wide, so deep, so long. It's so boundless. That why do you get to pick how your boundaries are set for love? Why do you get to choose your boundaries for love? You said yes to me and I was boundless with love for you. Why do you get to pick who you get to love? 
That's what that scripture means. It's saying, hey, go beyond self. Go beyond yourself. This also means that you will receive more fruit of the Spirit. You'll grow into the joy of God through loving others. And all of a sudden, your walk, no matter what, will become more of a joy than a hindrance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you ran into financial trouble, but all you can do is think about the joy in your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've, you've run into a broken arm or something, and all you can think about is, Lord, at least I get to spend one more day serving you. I'm so thankful and joyful for that. Ephesians 3.20 says this. It says, Now all glory to God who is able, though his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask to, or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. Paul finishes the ch this chapter with, Hey, guess what? Glory to God. You're going through all these trials and all these tribulations and everything is happening. Glory to God. But Ben, someone close has died to me. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you get the glory. Turn this around. Make something real happen for it so we can give you more. There's no, there's no end to the glory. Do you see that? There's no end. Paul, Paul makes a note to say, hey, forever and ever. There's no period before forever. It's forever and no period after that and ever. Finally. And he says, hey, guess what? This glory, this joy that you're going to abound, this, these fruits you're going to get, hey, guess what? Every single bit of it you don't get to keep. It's not yours to keep. Through the suffering you went through and the, the great, awesome victories you've had, you don't get to keep that. That's not yours. That's mine. See, Jesus is saying, that's mine. That's, that's all my father's. That's God's. God gets to keep every bit of it. That's tough, isn't it? Tough cookies. But guess what? Because of that obedience, because you're giving the glory up, God says, here, let me give you more of the fruit. Isn't that what we want? Don't you want your branches to hang low because they're weighed down by the fruit of the Spirit? Because when your branches hang low, when they're weighed down by the fruit of the Spirit, your smile seems to turn upside down and, and become, or your frown seems to turn upside down and turn up. And no matter what, no one can wipe that off. Because joy brings on a, a, a reaction, a smile that's better than anything. Lola asked me this morning, she goes, hey, what's the difference between happiness and joy? And I said, well, happiness is fleeting. And she goes, happiness is an emotion. Yeah, guess what? Emotions are fleeting. Emotions don't last. Joy is something more than an emotion. It's something that, that stands forever. When you get a taste of someone else's joy, you almost become depressed because you don't have it. You want to talk about depression in this world. No one has it anymore. No one has joy anymore. You, get, you capture joy. Let me tell you this. You capture the eternal joy that Jesus Christ gives you and depression goes out the window as long as you're feeding it. As long as you're watering it. Oh, that's another story, isn't it? If we understand that we give God glory more today, God will get more glory today. That's a, that's a Captain Obvious thing to say. Yeah. If we understand that God gets glory today, then today God will get more glory. Because you've understood it. You're saying, God, I now understand glory. Now I need to give it to you. I understand that. Let me give you some. And God smiles and says, that's what I'm talking about. Galatians 5, verse 19 says this. 
says, when you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, and lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dis- dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, and parties, and other sins like these. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. Let me say that, say it now, that as people we look at all this stuff and we think, wow, what fun. Maybe you don't. Maybe you don't, but maybe one time in your life you did. Maybe you saw this stuff and you go, wow, what a great, great party that looks like. Maybe you didn't. But maybe a little part of you goes, wow, 15 seconds of of glory right there. We also have to decide, someone like that, are they running after joy or happiness? Like I said, joy is an emotion. Or happiness is an emotion. Let Let me correct myself. Happiness is an emotion. Hey, you want to go smoke some weed? Great. Great 15 seconds in God's world for happiness. Or brain dead. Whatever. You want, to go, you want to go to a party and get drunk? Hey, have fun for the 15 seconds in God's world that you can have fun. That's what that means. And we all know people who love what I just read off. But don't judge them. Don't judge them. Don't point your finger at them. Because somewhere in your heart, at one time in your life, or maybe even today, you're there too. So don't judge them. In fact, instead of judging them, why not wear the fruit? Why not put on the fruit that you've obtained over the years? And maybe you haven't. Maybe you ask God for it in those moments when you start looking at them going, "Uh uh-oh. Glutton for punishment. And maybe you start praying that. And that would be found in Galatians 5 verse 22 starting and ending with verse 26. But it says this. It says, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to the cross and crucified them there. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Let us not become conceited or provoke one another or be jealous of one another. Hey, someone's sinning and you call them out when they don't believe? Guess what you just did? What's that word that starts with P close to the end there? Oh, yeah. We just provoked them. They probably want to do it more. Anybody ever been there? Your mom and dad, when you were young, told you, you shouldn't go drink, and guess what you did? Hey, don't go out and party. Guess what you did? Hey, you shouldn't sneak out. Oh, maybe, maybe this one. Hey, don't touch the stove. It's hot. Ooh, let me touch that. Right? We try to correct people that don't want to listen. Instead, go to prayer. Seek this fruit and start displaying the fruit. Start displaying them. Start displaying self-control. Hey, part of our testimonies have something to do with self-control, most likely. And if we share our testimony, then they see the fruit that's come from that. And all of a sudden, people see you and go, wow, you came from that life? Henry Drummond, who's an evangelist who teamed up with Dwight L. Moody at one time, he wrote this. He said, No one can get joy by merely asking for it. It is one of the ripest fruits of the Christian life. And like all fruit, it must be grown. How many times do we ask for Insta fruit? Like Insta coffee. You still have to do some work to get it, but it's not as much as if you grew your own beans. 
How many times do we go, God, give me, give me more patience right now. I need it right now. Lord, I want joy right now. Oh, I need self-control right now. Oh, yeah, you're going to get it right now, huh? Yep. How, what have you done to obtain more of that? You'll get a little bit. And God might show up supernaturally and give you something for one time. But what else have you done? Mark shared a story. Can I share this about your smoking? He was praying about it. Someone came over, prayed the spirit out of him. He walked out the door, and as soon as he got out the door, he felt the tap on the shoulder. And he wants to smoke, right? Just because he prayed it out of this place doesn't mean he prayed it out of this place. Doesn't mean he did anything to get it out of this place. And a lot of people go through that. Some are supernaturally delivered, but others, others have to work harder. Because God has a different plan. Don't judge that. We're not, you're not allowed. The word is pretty clear. Do not judge. That is not your job. The other thing it says is, hey, take the plank out of your own eye before you take the speck out of theirs. It's none of your business what's their issue. Because in your eyes, that's a speck. In their eyes, their own sin is a plank. And it's the same with you. See, if we're going to live by the Spirit, all of these gifts are going to direct us that way. Someone's sinning. Someone's living a life you don't agree with. Guess what? If you're living by the Spirit and the, cell, the Spirit is, is alive in you and your fruit are hanging low because there's so much of it, guess what? You're not going to pick out their sins and their troubles and their, their issues. You're going to go, hey, how can I help you? And you're not going to care who it is because God's going to lead you and they're going to be illuminated and it's like Peter and John going to Gate Beautiful five times a week and all of a sudden one day the same guy who's been begging is illuminated and they say, pick up your mat and walk. If we're living by the Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit is hanging low, guess what? God's going to... You're communicating with the Spirit. The Spirit's going to show up. And then that, oh, that one, that one thing that the Bible tells us not to do. What is that? Worry? Goes out the window too. You will not worry about tomorrow or the past. For you have enough to worry about today. But joy is one of the ripest fruits and and it just doesn't appear. We are called to a life of fruit. And joy is one of the ripest. When someone sees your joy, do they not want it? Here's the thing. Happiness is fleeting, but joy is contagious. Joy is contagious. If you have a real joy... Someone's going to see it and want it. And they're going to want to steal it from you too. Because it's so contagious. But it's the best fruit. Like, uh, Sorry, love is the best fruit. But it's the second best fruit, I think. I'm not saying that's for sure. I'm just saying that's my opinion. Because it's contagious. Love is great. But joy is contagious. Joy is that thing that, that bubbles up inside of you when you don't want to. And it makes you get out of bed in the morning and, and makes you go and work and makes you put on a smile when you hate your job. Deep down, you hate your job, but you love the people. I've been there. I worked at Best Buy. Come on. I love those people. The job was monotonous. But I love those people. See, when we chase the fruit of the Spirit, no law can contend or condemn us. Have you ever thought about that? None of the fruit are condemning. No law can go up against the fruit. I mean, they're talking about self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, self-control. Like, what law do you see that says, no, you can't have those? I mean, really? What law in this world? Is it speeding? No speeding? How about murder? Is that... Does that take away your joy? Because if murder is your joy, we got other issues. If speeding is your joy, I will relate with you. But do you know what I'm saying? Like, 
No, there's no law that says, no, you may not have joy. No, you may not have peace. No, you may not have patience. No, we go after patience and love and joy and peace and everything in our world. And our world seems to be lost on this roadmap that's written out for us in the Word of God. But the only way to get it is through the Holy Spirit. We must seek more of each fruit. You know, this week you might go, Lord, I want more love. And next week you might change it up and go, Lord, I want more joy. And the next week you might go, Lord, I want more peace. And so on. And then once you're done with your weeks, and then you go, you know what, God? I need more love again. Maybe you do it daily. Maybe you switch them up daily. Maybe monthly. Maybe whatever. But... The reality is we must be seeking the fruit of the Spirit more every day of our life. There's no, there's no reaching the limit. That, that's proof in what I read about love and how it's boundless. You will never reach boundless. So we must seek this fruit in our life. It's not a physical fruit. It's not something that you're going to eat. But the product and the, the fruit that's produced through this fruit is physical. It's people. It's people coming back to Jesus or coming to Jesus for the first time. It's people realizing their sin without you saying a word because you're just around. It's the cleansing of someone. It's the cleansing of yourself. The fruit starts becoming seen. And people start going, there they are. They're so full of joy. And they call you by your fruit. And the world might just call you by your fruit because they don't know Jesus. They might not even call you a Christian. But they call you a follower. Let me encourage you. I'm going to invite the band up. Let me encourage you today. Grow towards Jesus. Let your roots grow towards Jesus. And while you're doing that, share your fruit. Share your fruit. Your fruit can come through your testimony. If that's what it calls, share it. Ask the Holy Spirit to go with you today and tomorrow and the next day and the next day. But don't just pray it one day. Pray it forever. Pray it forever. Holy Spirit, I need you. Invite him in today. Yes, we obtained him when we were saved. But guess what? He wants to allow us to be represented in him daily. And sometimes he just needs you to ask. Because why? Because he's a gentleman. He doesn't just come knock down your walls and say, I'm going to intervene in your life. Unless you ask him to knock down your walls and intervene in your life. You know what I'm saying? My Jesus is not going to wreck me if I don't ask him to wreck me. He's going to wreck me if I ask him. But if I don't ask him, he's going to sit there and go, when are you going to ask me? You know? He's not going to break down the walls and enter my life unless I say, God, break down my walls and enter my life. That's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's not going to give you a fruit unless you ask for it. He's not going to give you the access to it. You, you've got access to it, but he's not going to allow you to understand it until you ask for it. Why? Because the Holy Spirit works the same way as Jesus. I remember a story. Children started coming to Jesus. Even just going towards him was the asking to be close to him. And the disciples stopped him, but they, he saw it and he said, No, you don't stop anyone from coming to me. And then there's the crowd full of, of people and this woman is making her way in and out and through and she just wants to touch his cloak to get healing. And instantly he felt the power and he asked, Who was that? Not to condemn them, not to convict them, but to love on her. See, Jesus doesn't stop you from getting to him, but he won't go out of his way to get to you without you asking. See, he'll go out of his way if you ask. But is anything really out of his way? No. The Holy Spirit's the same way. You want to see people come to Jesus? You want to see people enter this, this door over here? 
You want to see people walk even onto the property? Start seeking the Spirit of God. Start allowing the Holy Spirit to give you more today. You might be seeking it now. And that's totally fine, but God's saying, I want more. And you're saying, ah, I have enough. And maybe you're not. Maybe you're like, yes, I need more. I want more. Hey, that's great. That, that's never an endless message. Because Jesus has more. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, as we get ready to leave here, as we worship you for one last song, Lord, I pray that our prayer as a church in unity would be, Lord, I need more fruit.